What up, everybody? It's your brother Van Silk sitting here. Are you hip hop? All right. What I'm doing is bringing back a project that me and my late brother, the DJ K Slay, had started about six years ago called What's the Science? He's executive producer, I'm co executive producer. So, I was doing interviews and, um, you know, we, we, I think we taped about 15 episodes. I think we only have eight or nine in the can. But due to his untimely death, I guess I had to find some way to try to finish the rest of these up. But the first interview that was for What's the Science is with cool DJ Red Alert, the legendary DJ. And I want you to check it out. And uh, I'll be I'll be bringing some more What's the Science uh, interviews done by the late DJ K Slay. This is Van Silk. I'm out. What's the science, baby? What's the science? Back again, What's the Science Showcast. And I call it a showcast because it's a little more than a podcast. I'm putting on a show where you can visually see what's going on. And um, this is basically hip hop education for the brothers who are uneducated on where this culture comes from. And I got another legend sitting next to me. I'm honored to have him here. We have the cool DJ Red Alert in the building right now. Red, what's going on, man? You tell me, G. What's going on? What's the deal? I mean, you know, just trying to make this situation we got going on All right. elevate a little more. You know, people have an understanding, but people fear what they don't know. Well, you know, instead of having them, you know, going by the school, take them to school. Exactly. You know, that's what it is. Bring the school to them. Yes. So all the excuses of I'm young and I didn't know this and that now, I'm giving you a platform where if you want to seek the knowledge, here it is. And so much is accessible to them today. They just got to take the, you know, the advantage of it because everything is online. And I know mm -hmm. what we have is going to be online and everywhere else. So, yo, just go forth and check it. That's all. That's what's up. So, Red Alert, what was your first introduction to the hip hop culture? My first introduction was Cool Herc. Mm. First time I ever got to acknowledge was coming up in the Bronx. Well, first it was a guy named Nevins. I went okay. to D.W. Clinton High School. Mm -hmm. Me coming from Harlem, going to D.W. Clinton High School up in the Bronx, and my man Nevins used to always say, Herc, Herc, Herc. So I didn't know what he was talking about. So at that time, I was staying in Colonial Projects right behind the pole grounds. Mm -hmm. You know, even though I'm from originally down on 111th between 7 and 8, but I was with my grandparents up there. So I, my friends and I, we was leaving from the project and going up um, right around 174th Street under the L of the Ford train off of Jerome. And we was going to place that looked a little like suspect, but as we got close, we start hearing noise, step on in, that was the Twilight Zone. <clears throat> and I step in there, that's when I was saying that you didn't have to be dressed. You could be as you are, even though you had a couple people that was a little dapper. They used to call the fly girls and the fly guys. Remember yeah, that in the yeah, past? Yeah. And then I go all the way in the back, I see this big husky guy behind the set. And I'm watching him and like, it was, it was two guys. The guy who I'm talking about was who was behind the set. The guy who was next to him, who was on the microphone, was Coke LaRock. Okay. And I'm hearing this, you know, difference of what it is that you hear on the radio, or you may hear out in the street. They bring some of that stuff, but along with other different elements and different sounds. And I caught the bug there. Okay. I caught the bug there. And then, you know, after I finished high school, because I played ball for a minute, I went away for a year and a half. I went to Hampton. When I came out, here come another um, flow right behind Cool Herc. You have Flash, you have 
the L Brothers, you have, um, rest in peace, AJ, you have Mario, you have Smokey, you had quite a few people. So I was saying, you know what? This gave me some interest because I was watching everything that Herc was doing. I would watch every time if I was go up in the, in, the, in the bleachers, if he was doing the high school, I would go up in the bleachers and go around and look down and see what records he had. Anything I see he had, I went running home because my brother had a large record collection. Mm -hmm. See if I could pull them out. So now here come the next set of people. I see them. I said, you know what? Encourage me to start working, save some money, buy my set of turntables, buy, buy my little bit of equipment for what little bit of money I had, mm -hmm. and I start learning to practice on my own because by listening to what everybody else was doing. You know, I think it helped me along also because in high school I took up music. Okay. So when I took up music, I learned how to read music. So I think that helped accommodate me so when I started DJing, how to segue, how to blend, how to mix at the time. And then who I taught was my cousin. He was staying down in Harlem, and from there, he moved up in the Bronx. He moved to Bronx River Projects. First person to put him down, rest in peace, Mario. Mm. But you know, he was doing a little jerk, herky jerky on him, and then Bam Bada found out that he just moved in the project. He said, yo, you with me. And then he spoke up to um, Bam Bada about me, and then Bam put me on. I talked about my cousin, the original DJ Jazzy J. Okay. And that's how that became me being a part of the Zulu Nation. Okay, that's what's up. So, being part of Zulu, your name was definitely like one of the, as far as DJs, like you was like DJ Red Alert. Like, you, you, you know what? It was even crazy. It, not just how nice you was, but your name was authentic. You had one of the motherfucking names, like <laughs> Red Alert, where he thought of that name. And you know, that and name. Where did that name come from? That name come from playing ball. Like I say, I used to play high school ball, I play organized ball. And, um, because tall, skinny, and big old red afro. Okay. And um, according to my style of play, you know, I was pretty good at it. So I, yeah. my man Dennis, you know, by me hanging up in the Grand Concourse at the time in the Bronx, my man Dennis, he gave me that nickname, Red Alert. And I got along with everybody, so I put it all together, became cool DJ Red Alert. Yeah, Matter of fact, I remember the first time I wanted to be attached cool with Red Alert. I went, I seen Cool Hurt. Now, this is the code in the street. You can't mm. buy the person's name. Real talk. You can't buy it. So what I did, I went up to Hurt. I said, yo, Hurt, I'm DJing now. So, you know, Hurt, you know, at that time, he's that giant. You know, he like, and I said, yo, man, I want to know if I can attach Cool to my name. So he was looking around, nonchalant. Then he took time looking at me like, yeah, go ahead, man, go ahead, go ahead. But you know what? In respect, I ask. Right, because you yeah. can't buy the number. Person, yeah. name, style, whatever it is. That's real talk. And so that's how that really grabbed onto me. But I'm gonna tell you something, man. I was on the bottom of the totem pole because before me, everybody was looking at Jazzy, everybody was looking at Islam, everybody was looking at Grand Mixer DST, Ooh. everybody was looking at Rest in Peace Wizkid. The list is long. I was bottom of the totem pole until I say, I hope my turn will come. When did DJ Red Alert get to radio? Well, the first in the beginning, like before major radio, I was with Africa Islam on this um, station called um, WHBI, yeah. 105.9, where hip hop radio first was born. Rest in peace, my man, Super Rock and Mr. Magic. And that was like around late 82 into early 83 that I was with Islam doing Zulu beats. Zulu beats, yeah. We were doing Zulu beats and then, you know, we was amongst everybody else that was on HBO at the time. You had the world famous Supreme Team, you had Jerry Blood Rock, you had um, Awesome 2, you had um, Sweet G, we had a radio show at that time, a lot of people forgot about that. Yeah. So we had our show called Zulu Beats and um, on Fridays we was rocking at the Roxy. So the program director of KISS FM, Barry Mayo, came down and had started chatting with Bam Bada. And the first person that had interest was Islam. He missed a couple of appointments, so they went after my cousin Jazzy. He did it for about maybe a couple of months, but he passed up because he wasn't paying. So that's when they came to me in October of 83. I went and did it. Three months of no pay, but it was building my name, building mm -hmm. my statue, paying my dues. And I just never looked back 33 years later. 33 years on the radio? Yes. Cool DJ Red Alert. 33 Legendary. years. Going on Legendary. 34 is a blessing. 
What was the biggest venue you ever DJed at? I'm gonna tell you the biggest venue, which was the scariest in, in my concern, because back in 85, I was DJ for Sparky D during the Roxanne, Roxanne ever. And um, no, Sparky D was the person that was going after Shantae because Shantae went after UTFO. So Rock she was Rock defending Rock for yeah. UTFO going mm -hmm. after Shantae. And we was opening up for a new addition at the place called The Spectrum in Philadelphia. And we're talking about over 20,000 people in there. So not only that you hear the crowd, but with the roar and the sound, you feel it. Mm. And I'm like, on that stage DJing yeah. for her because you know you're in front of all this and you're feeling that and um I I got past that you know but I think that was that um still that part of that boot camp mm. <laughs> passing the test you know right that's what it was so now this is a very intricate part of hip-hop right here yes South Bronx versus Queensbridge <laughs> you gonna laugh. Man. Man. I remember when the South Bronx record came out, everybody, because you know, up Harlem in the Bronx was kind of, mm -hmm. and it was kind of Brooklyn and Queens. You yes. understand what I'm saying? Yes, it was. Like, yes. when the South Bronx record came out, we was going crazy. Nuts. But I remember when the bridge is over came out, niggas was like, uh, yeah, they was like, yo, they like, ooh, like, mm, yeah, uh-huh. What was that time like? Like, what was going through y'all minds? Like, well, when well, let me let me try and break some down real quick and simple. You know, before South Bronx and the Bridge, when that Rock Tan Rock Tan ever was going on, it was rivalry between the two radio stations, WBLS and Kiss FM. So you know, Molly was working with Mr. Magic and Chuck Chill Out, and I was on Kiss while they were on BLS. So, you know, when I broke UTFO and they got upset, they went after um, Shantae and they put her out. And then here with this Sparky, I got to meet her at Russell Simmons' office and she said, I want you to be my DJ. And then, so that was in the part of the rivalry. So now after that flooded out, now here come MC Sham. One thing I can say, even though that Marley was on with there, he made good records. One thing had nothing to do with the other. So I played all the records even though I was mm -hmm. on a different station. So I was banging off the bridge. But here come one night, Celebrity Tuesdays, in Latin Quarters, my man DJ Rahu along with the Awesome Two, they all together and who comes stepping in? Rest in peace, Scott LaRock, KRS-One. Mm -hmm. They came with this acid tape, that's what we call it then. It was a hard play that we buy acid tape. And he gave it to DJ Rahu. He put it on, played it, South Bronx. People went nuts the very first time. He said, yo, ho, ho, I got to play this over again. He played the whole entire thing. People was going crazy. After he handed it back to Scott, Scott handed it to me and said, this is for you to play. So now I'm already playing the bridge on the radio. Mm -hmm. But when it came to the chorus of the bridge, two to two to two, I, I threw in South Bronx, South, South Bronx. And I think that started the splurge of the rivalry right from there. Mm. So it's safe to say red alert. <laughs> had an intricate <laughs> part of that whole beef situation. Hip hop beef, <laughs> you understand? Because I look at it this way, it was always a rivalry me and them. Even though we never got into nothing physically, even yeah. when I, was, I used to be on the road with um, Magic and Marley were doing the Roxanne, Roxanne ever, you know, we was, you know, traveling together. I, Fly Ty was my, my roommate a couple of times. Mm -hmm. But when we got on the on the radio, we learned how to do it professionally. Mr. Mazzy he had that mouth, you know, he called yeah. me all different type of names, Red Dirt, Woody Woodpecker, he used to say slap the wrist, lipstick off the radio. But then I had some people used to make some diss promos at Magic. So now here it is, I have another thing I can go after them with. I'm playing your song, I'm playing the bridge. You can't say I'm den not denying I'm playing it. But this time I'm gonna step on it, playing South Bronx. Mm. Yeah, they came back with Kill That Noise. Yeah, I remember that joint. When they came back with that, I never forget. Scott LaRock called me, said, yo, I want you to go to Power Play out in Queens. Went in there, heard the track. He said, I want you to do that slogan that everybody know you for that you do on the radio. I did it at one take. And it stuck on there, and that became a hit. The bridge is over. 
That bridge is over. When that came out, <laughs> I ain't even want to hear no more. I did not want to hear no more. It was like, yo, it was nasty. But we it kept nasty. it professional. And that's why I respect the, a lot of the old school battles, you know, opposed to now, because now I don't really want any part of that, because I know it's going to be violence. It's gonna be violence yes. and you know, they, they step on each other and they not thinking. I mean, it's a blessing that I could say, Riffin, years after that, South Bronx and, and, and the bridge, that here it is, rest in peace, Mr. Magic, MC Shan, Chaos One and I got together to do a Sprite commercial. You know, people don't business think of them type. It's, it's, it's business, you know? It's business. And then not only that, when you look and see how LL Cool J and Mo D can embrace each other. Mo D can go ahead and join together with, with Busy B, even though it wasn't directly at each other, but it was during the MC competition. Um, Shantae show love with Sparky D. She was the she was the maid of honor at Sparky's wedding. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. we have built a relationship. And that's what I think is missing. Now, it's sad that the mentality that you're thinking more of the dollar instead of the talent, because you know, you talented and you can do and make it happen, but I don't think you should let the ego and the dollar get in front of the talent, because that's where it causes destruction of what's going on today. That's what's up, man. My opinion. No, not your opinion. And you know, no, you're no, good no. at what you're doing. You, you're good. You, you can go forth. You can go hard. You can go big. You can go major. But you'd be more respected if you keep your craft going instead of your personal and your residuals and everything all above. That's my point. I don't care how tough you are. I don't care how much money you get. I don't care how many women you got, how many cars you got. How good are you? getting on that microphone or them turntables. That's the bottom line. Anything other than that, that's your little personal gifts. I'm mm -hmm. talking about when it comes to the culture, you gotta show and prove or yeah. uh, that, that, that's not a factor in. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If, if you shot 10 people, that don't mean I gotta like how you rap. One thing don't have Real nothing talk. to do with don't the other. that shit go. Exactly. That's, you know? I don't wanna hear about and, that and, right and, and you know what I think is sad today? We live in the viral world. When I say we live in the viral world, everything is online. And the social media world has been a, a gift and definitely a curse. Because you can make something bigger out of anything off of the energy of what's being portrayed, you know? They, they get this image of you for what they see over and over, they hear over and over, and they really think that's the way it is, but then it's his smoking mirrors. That's real talk right So, here. I mean, come on, you know? Be honest with yourself, be true with yourself. I know we all on social media, you know, because we keeping our name out there, but we gonna make sure that the craft come right along with the name, along with the image you see or whatever we portray, you know? Just don't go ahead and put up certain situations and make you think that gonna work for you. No, it's gotta be more to it than just that. Real talk. So last question I wanna ask you is, how important is it for the new brothers in this game to know the hip hop history. If you go into school and you taking up social studies, history, anything dealing of the past that you have to take time to study on, if you can do that, you can go ahead and do your study and your homework on any coach you go or be. It could be in sports, it could be in industrial, it could definitely be in hip hop. No, I look at it this way. When I look at the NBA All-Star, that's why I'm happy that you're doing it. I hope this is going to happen down the road. That when I look at a person like a LeBron James sitting down with a Mr. Bill Russell and having a conversation, why is it that young Ma cannot sit down with a Queen Latifah and have a conversation? So if you all go ahead and get involved with this culture, do your homework, do your studies and see where it came from. No, no, there's no such thing as writing us off, you know? We shovel for y'all to be where you're at. You don't owe us nothing, but we really appreciate that you keep this going on in the right perspective. You're right. I couldn't have said it better. Definitely want to thank you for coming through, man. Respect, man. Once again, what's the science showcast, man? Just trying to make knowledge born, you know. If you want this education, it's out here for you now. There's no more excuses, yo. Warning. Warning.
Warning. Warning. The Drama King is in the building. The Drama King is in the building.